film you've seen a million times before. Are you saying it's on Christmas? Where am I going? I, I haven't packed. Snowy Heights. That's my hometown where I grew up. So pour yourself a wholesome mug of hot cocoa. I'm here. Whoa! Or maybe Whoa! something a little stronger. Silly me. And I've interrupted your date. Oh, oh, no. I just got here from the big city. Oh, <laughs> you're a lesbian. Most folks from the big city are. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Uh, Even no. I've licked. Oh, Mrs. Clovenwitz. Whenever I have a problem, I ask, what will my dead parents do? Die, I guess. But most importantly, we learned that small towns are way better than big cities. And that's what Christmas is all about. <laughs>
some sort so, of horror movie that happens in the drive-in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alex and Storm, congratulations again. This is your first feature film. Working with Jake, who, you know, I said in the review, and I now I would say to you too as well, I think when it comes down to Jake and his writing, when he envisioned characters, he really brings them to life. So looking at the least of this film, you know, first time speaking to you all, I knew you had to be very special because of just how he makes his characters resonate with us. So knowing and have seen Jake's works in the past, reading the script, which I know y'all both said was absolutely hilarious, did you have any clue what you were getting into? <laughs> well, I think I kind of had an idea. I'm going to just uh, put these up here for a sec. Right. Um, fun time. <laughs> um, my, my audition uh, script, one of, one of the first scenes, um, the character had to eat a pine cone. And I think that was my moment when I knew it was going to be a little bit, uh, it's going to be a little bit different, a little bit strange. There's going to be <laughs> some interesting things that I would have to eat afterwards. And <laughs> <laughs> so did you commit to that? I mean, did you eat a pine cone for this film? Because this would be a good thing for, you know, young actresses and young actors to know when they're trying out for roles, like how far you have to go. You know what? You know, I probably would have if they if they really if they really needed me. To. Create some but, girl shit for us. As a <laughs> I was lucky enough because um, Jess had made a little like fake pine cone. She uh, put some cocoa powder and like I can't remember what it was. I think it was squash or something like that. Chocolate, it was chocolate frosted flakes individually placed into a sweet potato. Um, like piece by piece, it took her many hours. Our production designer, Jess Kramer, and it looked that, and she did so many of them in it. Honestly, really so good too, yeah. right? So good. Jess is really great <laughs> yeah. and, and doesn't make anyone eat gross. No, things. no, you know what? And everything, the best part about Jess with like, we're talking about these props is that the things that she makes are actually so nice that you want to keep yeah. eating more of them. Yeah. That was a delicious yeah. treat that I was excited <laughs> to try. <laughs> It sounds like it sounds like there's some merchandise opportunities I'll here. Just well. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, boutique boutique edible pine yeah. cones. Yeah, it's it's sure sure we sure sure sure. all the buzzwords. My mom made this for me. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> <laughs> Your mom, the, uh, the the merchandise uh, director yeah. of Cup of Tea. Yeah. yeah, there is actually merchandise. The little dogs in the film, the Santa dogs. Uh, you can buy those on our website with along with DVDs. Oh, nice. That was as good a time as any to to shove that in there. There we go. <laughs> our review copies must have gotten lost in the mail somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, so Alex, I, you know, I guess how did you you know did you how did you find this role and you know what did you did you know what you were getting into? Uh, had you yeah. worked with Jake before? I think what I well I'd never worked with Jake before so you know that's my first red flag um I think uh <laughs> I think that like what Storm said is right like you read the script and I've never had a script just jump off the page for me before like never like they gave us 15 pages of this aud audition material and I remember being like what the heck is he doing like I do not have time to do 15 pages but then you read it and you need to do it. It's so funny. Like the, the script really, really um, leaves from the page. And I think that just gave me a, a great idea of what I was in for, what we were in for. And I had so much fun on set. Yeah. 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 I mean, that, that definitely came through. It was like how, how much fun you all had making this film and, and kind of the camaraderie you all had. Mm -hmm. um, you know, did you all do anything? To kind of prep before, or I mean, the movie's so silly that you might have just all became friends during the screen, the filming. But did you all do anything before to kind of? Alex and I hate really each other. <laughs> I don't like this sitting next to me right now. I would say Jake blink twice if you need help, but I, I wouldn't be yeah, able to help. Be able to help. <laughs> um, I I'm I actually uh, while we were filming, Liam, the um, my brother and I spent a lot of time together. Even at one point, bunking up in bunk beds together. To like try to forge a little bit more brotherly Two love. On the top bunk, the bottom bunk was. Yeah, no, nobody <laughs> likes the bottom bunk. <laughs> we both got shot at the top, and 
Um, no, so I, that was that was a nice little cute thing. Falling asleep, listening to each other talk. Yeah, we all actually lived in the same house uh, while we, where we were shooting, so mm -hmm. that's how we all uh, bonded so so quickly and uh, and became really good friends uh, to this day. Yeah, just to clear everything up, I think Jake is brilliant, which is why I'm sitting right beside him. <laughs> lift your hands, make sure your hands hands check, make sure they're safe. I'm only <laughs> I'm only friends with people who think I'm brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can't yeah. even get my question. Out. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. Uh, so how did you, uh, like, this film, you know, clearly, it clearly, I can't tell if it loves or hates Christmas movies. Maybe it does both. Um, how did you all prep for this movie? Did you, did you just watch, like, all the Christmas movies? Did you watch none of the Christmas movies? Um, I, gave, I actually gave, uh, I gave the guys um, a watch list. And none of them uh, <laughs> included Christmas movies. Weirdly enough, they included a lot of uh, a lot of satire and spoof, um, some David Wayne movies, and of course yeah, airplane yeah. And stuff like that. Favorites. Um, but I think we are all aware of. I mean, I think I can't speak for Alex and Storm, but I think you guys have auditioned for those movies before, right? Yeah. Like it's just very com okay. Source them. <laughs> it's very common. Uh, yeah, it's very common here though that everybody goes out for those kinds of things. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know, Storm. Uh, you know, yeah, usually. Like... Let's just cut this part. Don't worry about it. Never mind. I'll take it back. No, okay. I think I think the funny thing is, is like I have gone out for a lot of Hallmark Christmas but movies. But everybody does. Everybody does. Yeah. And um, yeah, I haven't booked a single one. So it's it's funny that I would book the the one where we're making fun of them. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's Maybe the, the real treasure hidden in this for me. I think yeah, you're springboard into like feel good holiday Christmas movies. You can just show them this, and be like, look, I've done it before. <laughs> I actually said to them before we started filming, uh, I hope neither of you ever want to be in a real one of these. I, I don't think they're going to do that. So, they're all so, banned. So, so really quickly, Alex, now I just want to know, were you any, just any remote bit series of this? You said that this film was a kid's movie. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, watch, watch it with your tablets. <laughs> in, the, in the promos. <laughs> it, it must be just like a Canadian that. mistranslation. Did you mean childish? Or did you mean <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, you know, the, the viewing um, criteria here is really lax. Uh, in Canada. <laughs> it's like Europe. <laughs> No, yeah, actually, they're playing this in kindergartens all over. It's the really <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, I, you know, I think I think there is there are moments that if you if you mute, like we all watch those movies with with our families when mm -hmm. we were younger. Your your mom or your dad would just uh, mute the movie. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I watched this with my family too, and uh, they're not here right now, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 Jay. Well, uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, no. Go ahead. You go say something. I was just gonna, Alex's, Alex's, like young cousins came <laughs> yeah. to the screening yesterday, and they liked it. They did. I. It, it, it's like you know. I think a twelve-year-old would like it. Yeah. Because like that's the kind of movie that I would watch. I, I also think an adult would like it, <laughs> but it's yeah. not so horrible. <laughs> you wouldn't. Never mind. Whatever. Yeah. I think. I think it's view. Yeah, it's viewable. For a lot of ages, I think with like the right, the right um, guidance. Yeah, yeah. There are no <laughs> bad words, just bad intentions. Right. This movie has a lot of bad intentions. So. so, so seriously, Jake, when 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 you realized that you had your cast, your leads cast, what was your first reaction when you knew like this is who you got? And what was y'all's reaction to knowing you got casts? So obviously, a conversation amongst the three of y'all. Um. So, uh, so you mean like the moment that we cast them? When because there's I, I, uh, there's stories about <laughs> there's stories about each of them. Um, I think uh, I think I, I can speak to to storms kind of. My, so when I when I was doing my chemistry read, like mm -hmm. I, I hadn't got I hadn't gotten the part yet. I was still doing 
um, the audition process, and they were pretty confident with Storm. I think you had gotten the part, right? Yeah. Yeah. Storm just Storm gave I'll a just drop the mic right now and walks off. Yeah, just, yeah she she booked it immediately. But I remember <laughs> specifically <laughs> deal with it. I remember specifically walking into the the chemistry read, one of the final audition processes, and um, and doing it with Storm and being like, "Oh, this movie is going to be amazing if she's the lead. Like, this is going to be so good." I remember clearly thinking that, like, and there was no camera. I couldn't see anything. Just, just our interaction. I could tell that, like, they had found the perfect um, lead for their film. So that, that really, as soon as I, I had that, I was like, I need, I need to do this. I need to do this film. And, and for you, Storm. Sounds like she just walked yeah, in. We, and just we were like, yeah, it'll work, I guess. <laughs> you know, he was he was so great. It was so interesting being able to be involved in the audition process. I've never had the opportunity before. Um, but it really is like that the right person that you know when they walk in and it's just I don't know how to explain it because I <laughs> it kind of sucked knowing that now because now when I go into an audition and I don't get it, I know like <laughs> they're like eh. <laughs> but when like when Alec walked in and like he started doing his thing, it was like, wow, yeah, this is absolutely the perfect guy. And it was just kind of like that um, for anybody that I did the chemistry reads with. It was like, oh, yeah, this is the guy. So I also love how this process. is. I also love how this is the setup of, of a Hallmark movie right now. Like you do, when they walk in, you just know it right off the bat, and then the music starts playing and the camera slow <laughs> yeah. and... yeah. Okay, so Jake, now you're back. Yeah, so, what was your initial reaction again once you knew you had your leads and basically what you had written? Now you were ever going to see it come to fruition, and these were going to be the two people to do it. Yeah, I mean, they both just brought so much more to the role than Andy and I had written. Um, there's a lot of Alex and Storm in their roles. Um, it's just to make the film way, way funnier than it ever could have been without them. Uh, we had so many, so many really good people audition. Uh, but when we saw both of them, we just knew uh, that it was that there's nobody better. Um, and I'm really happy that uh, that so much of the reaction to the film is just specifically focused on the acting and, and, and these guys specifically because the acting in Hallmark movies is not great generally. And so to see actually good acting is, is so refreshing uh, and really makes a huge difference. And so let's, uh, let's talk quickly, just really quickly about the writing. So Jake, all about who, you know, you wrote yourself and in this movie, you, you had a co-writer, Alex, uh, I think it was Alex. And, um, and Alex. Uh, what was that like to, to kind of have a co-writer? How, how was that experience? And, and did you just kind of play off each other the entire time and kind of throw jokes off each other? Yeah, it was very different. I had, I've had i never co-written anything before, and I never thought that I would. Um, who you know took me years and years to write. Uh, and it's obviously very different. Um, <laughs> but this is so, so much uh, my style. And, and luckily, Andy and I and Storm and Alex, have we all have the same sense of humor and the same sensibilities. Um, so this was so much quicker, so much more fun because it's not a solitary writing process. You're not sitting alone, um, for years and years trying to think of well, how, where things should go. It's basically just Andy writes the scene. Um, when he's done 15 minutes later, I read it and I think that's really funny. And then I add a bunch of jokes and then I write the next scene and then he reads it and we're just trying to make each other laugh. And so that's a great way to know it's funny is if he's laughing or if I'm laughing, then the joke stays in the movie. And and for a film like this, where you have just so much kind of irreverent, uh, you know, humor. Can you hear us? Of, yeah, yeah, we can still hear you. Okay. okay. For a film like this, where you have so much kind of irreverent and just crazy humor, uh, you know, Storm and Alex, how did, did you all get to kind of like improvise as well? Did you throw out your own ideas? With, uh, how did you all kind of contribute to this, to the humor? Did you, did you, take things in another direction than what uh, Jake and Andy had written? Nope. No, it was, <laughs> it was a really, it was such a, a really fun, fun challenge because um, everything, most, like almost everything that we say exactly how it was written, like word for word, 
you know, there would be times where sometimes I would be having trouble with the words and they'd come out a little different. And then once we were done the take, Jake would be like, oh, yeah, Storm, so it was actually, um, <laughs> and then I'd have to go and switch the words back into its order. And uh, yeah, so it was pretty much, it was pretty much line for line. Just awesome natural humor. <laughs> Oh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with the mute part. I think, um, uh, yeah, J Jake was pretty great. Like, it's the the writing is just so good. You you really didn't want to deviate too too far from it, right? And Incredible. just because the jokes were so well well planned, so whenever mm -hmm. like Storm or I would go off, he would he would come back and and help us back on track because that ultimately would make the the whole kind of bit the best it could be. But one of the first things I noticed was like how how similar of a sense of humor um, I found myself to have with Jake. And it's like, that was like one of the first days of shooting. And it, that just makes you feel great when you know the director has like the exact same kind of sense of humor. Yeah. And it's, an, it's a humor you appreciate. You just feel like safe. And I like, I trusted, uh, I trusted him with everything pretty much. But, but to, to Storm and Alex's credit, there's so many funny things that they added that weren't in the script. Like one of my favorite moments is uh, when Storm is screaming and driving in the car near the end of the film when she has the dog. Uh, and she's screaming and screaming and screaming and she just says, oh, fuck. Yeah. And that's just her like, being tired of screaming and that wasn't in the script. And when I was editing and found that, I had to put that in. And then there's a bunch of little Alexisms that are so funny. Just him, uh, like, him making little noises or, or, or doing little things that are so funny that I included. See, there you go. Take, take, the, take the, you know, he's not, he's not a taskmaster. He lets you kind of. Yeah. 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 Everyone's allowed to say one word that it wasn't. In <laughs> he's allowed to play a little bit. It was fun. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, 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 I told this, I told this to Jake on the side. I'll bring it to the interview now. How the hell, and, and what was the overall atmosphere bringing Haley Chester to this film? <laughs> she is the most wonderful woman the most wonderful woman yeah we're yeah. all big fans yeah just um, like the most interesting life um supremely talented like anything i anything she would do i would i would laugh and so nice oh. and so kind and um was, I, I don't know if she's unlike her character um but I felt bad getting her to say the things that I made her say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a few times, especially when we were like in a, you know, in the cafe in the first few scenes packed with people. And I was like, Alex, say, call her a, you know what? And then she was, and, and, and she's just like, what? What are you, what are you, what are you doing? I was like, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a lot of times where she's like, what's that joke? And I'm like, don't, just don't worry. <laughs> but she's amazing. And uh, hopefully we'll be in every movie that I ever make along with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cup of Cheer 2, where we all just change roles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> her her oh, poor yeah. Google search history after this movie is going to be... <laughs> Break, breaking news, Jake says if this does well enough that I could be in cover tier too. So <laughs> be careful here. You don't know what he's gonna make you say. You gotta be careful. I wanna be Mary Lady, by the way. Like no fans of us. That's gender been that way. It. <laughs> uh, so Jake, oh, one of the things that uh that I, I was surprised with this film is uh the the music was just awesome like it's this like punk kind of christmas album yeah. that you could totally just release as its own you know standalone uh, work so you know, well, yeah hopefully where, where did you find this band and you know like was were these uh, all made for the album or did you did you did they have something beforehand yeah so so brayden barry is our composer he also plays the henchman in the movie um and he did all the score and all the original songs Whew. in the movie is like in a in a in a movie filled with ridiculously talented people. He, I think everyone will agree, is the most talented by far. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, he can do anything. He also does the voiceover in the trailers. Like he can do anything. 
Um, and so he made all those original songs for us. He composed the entire movie on his laptop. He had never composed before. It sounds like an orchestral score. Um, and all those songs actually will be released. Uh, the first single comes out um, next Tuesday, uh, uh, November 7th. Uh, the, the single When Snow Falls, which is the song in the credits, that comes out in Spotify and iTunes. And then the whole album will be released in a few weeks. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's so weird. You say he was a henchman because I saw him in the film. I was like, damn, that looks like some of a Fallout boy. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Oh man, so much like I said in the review, there's nothing about this film that feels indie to me, and that's just the extra icing on the cake. This this film has a soundtrack releasing, <laughs> so that, that's a big yeah. deal. <laughs> that's a big deal. It's so, been it's been on repeat. Like I, it's all I've been listening to <laughs> is the soundtrack. We see that. <laughs> And I said this in the, in the review. Like I, I rewound the credits like three or four times just to yeah. listen to it while I was yeah. writing my review because yeah. it's it's so catchy. Yeah, yeah. All and, right. And so sincere the song at the end because it's like funny, 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 funny joke, 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 and then the credits and it's like wow, that's a good song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, all right. So if you've been part of uh, interviews that me and David have conducted, this is the part where we kind of really try to get to know the cast. And, uh, and and the stars of the film, just a little bit closer, asking some questions that correlate to the film to kind of see um, if it actually reflects in their personal life. So, David? They're all lightweight. You can choose not to answer if you want, although given what Jake made you say, I don't think anything I'm asking will, uh, <laughs> will offend anyone. <laughs> so, uh, first question, what's your, uh, what's your go-to drink order? Hot chocolate, coffee, tea, something else? Pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> By and far, pumpkin spice latte is the drink <laughs> of the season. It wow. is delicious. Yeah. I, I, my go-to is vanilla iced coffee. Mm. Very sweet. Very, very sweet words. Okay. Jake, are you uh, more of a brooding um, black coffee man? I, I think um, uh, vanilla matcha green tea latte. Mm. Mm. I all think all Canadians good. have a bit of a sweet tooth. Food is a lot sweeter up here. Yeah, it's all the maple syrup. Yeah, well, you need that extra energy because of the the frigid cold and the and the elk. So, yes. <laughs> how about how about you two? What your drink yeah. of choice? Wait, did you say elk? <laughs> I said elk. elk. <laughs> oh, elk. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I do not drink coffee, and I also don't really like tea. But if I had to go with a go to drink that's like a guilty pleasure, be it will be. Now, I know you're going to criticize me here, but it'll be bubble tea, but actually the smoothies, not the tea. That's a good one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So, wait, they, they, they blend the bubbles or they make a smoothie and then add the bubbles after? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, on radar for today now, now that it's been brought up. <laughs> Today's sponsor is, is uh, bubble tea. <laughs> what about you, uh, Dave? I, I feel like I'm the old dad here. I, I, black coffee. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> four cups a day. So. <laughs> oh, man. I'm like Jake. I don't sleep. Um, are y'all from a small town, big city? Mm. Um, I feel like we're all from comparable size suburbs around Toronto. Uh, not really a small town like where we shot, but not really a big city either. I guess I probably should have put it in between there. Yeah, I love, sorry I love, to not answer. I love Aurelia, too. That was a beautiful uh, location to shoot at. Really nice. Yeah, Thank was, you. Yeah, it's as charming as it is in the movie. I saw a review the other day that was like, the movie's really good. But the parts where they went to Aurelia, I've never been there, so I didn't like those parts. <laughs> 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 I really like movies if they've been to where it's shot. <laughs> <laughs> Did, did you all film that during the, like, during the holidays? Was it already set up like that? Or did you have to set up all that Christmas cheer yourselves? Oh, yeah. It was a, it was in late February. So Jess, our production designer, I swear to God, didn't sleep for a month. Duh. She was decorating the whole town pretty much wow. by herself. Yeah. Seth, awesome. Did she just go into, I don't know what the equivalent up there is, of like Target on the day after Christmas, just buy like everything? That, that's <laughs> smart, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went to Walmart. We got everything at like 75% off while they were clearing the shelves after Christmas. 
And uh, all that stuff is still in a garage somewhere, right? Waiting uh, for the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you throw a dart at a map, where where would you end up? <laughs> wow, depends on your aim. Yeah, oh, this, this, wow. you, I mean, this, this is your question, so you know you kind of gauge your aim. <laughs> throw a dart at a map. Where is it going to end up? Is that like where we want it to end up? Hopefully, the hell out of twenty twenty. Yeah. <laughs> it could be where you want it to end up. It could be a recognition of your dart skills, and maybe it'll be slightly off to where you want to end up. It could be in the ocean. I mean, this this is all this is up to you. I'll yeah. I'll start. Um, I'll just say Aurelia. You know, um, it's just got a good vibe. I've shot both my movies there. I want to keep making movies there. Everyone is awesome. so helpful. It's a lovely town. That's awesome. Yeah. Super That's a great answer. answer. Great, like great question. Aruba. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Cuba, like, please. <laughs> so like, my, like, my answer is I'd probably aim for, like, Japan, but my aim would be off, so I'd get into, like, North Korea or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd, um... You know what? I will say this. Canada is a pretty large country. I have a pretty a pretty bad aim, so I just aim for Canada. I'm, I'm uh, I hope you land somewhere and good. I hope I land somewhere <laughs> somewhere good. I really, uh, I'm really, yeah, I'm really happy with like the, the not not being so much not doing so much travel this year. I thought was going to be like the worst, mm -hmm. um, but the only places I've gone have been in Canada. Like I've been been able to see part of this country. Parts of these countries that I, I I haven't been able to see. Look at me get choked up about talking about my own country. Right? I know, feel like a flag <laughs> like drop back behind yeah, you. Right behind me, you know? <laughs> I, I love I love me some Canada. So I work yeah. with you on that. It, it's uh, Storm. I don't think you gave a location. Well, I was gonna say Italy, but yeah. I think since Jake said Aurelia, I would say Mariposa. I hope that my dart would land right on Mariposa and I would get to go eat all of their food and just be there in my happy place. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer. In Aurelia, where, of course, a lot of, uh, a lot of who you know took place in that bakery. And then for this one, we shot right outside of it, uh, out on the main street. And they have amazing food. <laughs> There's I, I like a, a lot of really good, a lot of really good uh, shops in the rest of Aurelia. There's a lot of really good food. Americas is actually That's good. I like, uh, I like how our answers are all uh, just like anywhere but America, anywhere but 2022, and you're all like, I have to stay in Canada and be happy, <laughs> I love life. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> this year, this year just stalled, so I'll just take over. He'll he'll pop back in. His turn has been in and out. Um, do you all have like a cherished childhood toy or stuffed animal? Yeah, I used to have a blanket um, that I carried around with me for a very long time, like like too long. Um, many things in my early life were like too long. Like I I got rid of my like soother, like my baba. You know, when I was like five, the dentist had to tell me. I had to let it go. I gave it to Santa like three times. Santa kept taking it. I kept asking for it again. <laughs> so yeah. Um, <laughs> I have I have a bunch of these little um, basset hound stuffed animals because I used to have a basset hound. I was so obsessed with her. She was amazing. So my mom just kept giving me little basset hound things. So I still have a bunch of just little basset hounds in my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> and now Christmas dog, right? Christmas dog's on there too. <laughs> <laughs> I, my answer is the same as Alex. It was a little, uh, it was a little blanket that I had for too long. There's like a painting of my, uh, of like uh, my parents and the kids, uh, my brothers and sister, uh, and everyone like has a little trait. And mine was like the little blanket that I carried around. That's oh, that that was a much I sweeter. Think I, still, I think, yeah, I think I'm still out of it somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, your mom probably definitely saw it. <laughs> <laughs> what is the uh, craziest thing you've done to hide from an ex? To what? The craziest that thing you've done to hide from an ex. <laughs> hide from an ex. <laughs> oh. What is the craziest thing? I don't think I've ever had to hide from an ex before. 
I don't think I've ever seen them afterwards. Well, that's that's dark. <laughs> <laughs> no, they just never run into them. They just disappear. I don't know what happens to them. They just never run into them again. Disappeared. It was so weird. <laughs> <laughs> I love this that scene, by the way. Yeah, that was really cool. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know if I've ever like hid from an ex. I think um, Jake's like, "There's yeah. no way I'm answering this." Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like my ex is watching me right now. I can't say anything. <laughs> Jake hand is slowly moving. Like, Mm-mm, you see the little red <laughs> dot like show up on his. <laughs> Running his lawnmower. That's that's the ex that I I'm gonna kill. <laughs> Uh, do y'all have a, a go-to holiday tradition? Um, or yeah, go-to holiday tradition. Uh, okay, um, um, yeah. so, <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, the Grinches over here. <laughs> um, my family and I, we would all set up our tree together. So we'd put all the lights on and all the ornaments and stuff and put them in our little special places. So we'd always put the tree up together. Nice. That lawnmower is, that lawnmower is killing them. lawnmower is killing them. Trying to think about holiday traditions, but this. Like, I mean, longer. I mean, yeah, I think. I mean, Stone's right on point with like with some of the really simple things. Like we always allow to open up one gift before Christmas, mm-hmm. so they kind of like get you into it a little bit. So like you know, when a kid, you best. really you want to open up the big one, but yeah, you know, you got to wait for that. But <laughs> nonetheless, one gift before Christmas each year. And your, then your parents just wrap like a bunch of cleaning rags in a giant box. And I've like, never, I've never been bamboozled actually either. Thank <laughs> God, I probably traumatized me. <laughs> All right, what, uh, what is your favorite Christmas movie? Other than mm. Cup of Cheer, obviously. Yes, that's my answer. Um, <laughs> that's tough. I really like Christmas Vacation. Oh yeah, awesome. I just something about that film. I just love it. I think it's the um, it's the perfect am- amount of everything, you know. I think uh, I think maybe Elf. Elf's a good one. It's a classic. Yeah, good mix of everything. Uh, Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. Oh, wow. that is a classic. That is. I think, a classic. I think I know yours this year. I think I know what yours is going to be. No, nah, you don't. Oh, no, nah, you don't. And then you want to say Die Hard, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Die Hard is one actually. That's a that's a classic that I watch every year. He was mad that you didn't have any Die Hard references in Cup of Cheer. In the sequel, I, was, I was I was waiting for it. I knew it was coming. Yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> Mine's is actually Jingle All the Way. Oh, oh great, film. Film. great awesome. film! That's a got got to get Turbo Man. <laughs> <laughs> and mine is and in the Apocalypse. Oh, ah. okay. watch it every Very year, cool. at least since it came out. Yeah, you definitely did say you love that film. <laughs> so, yeah. film. I mean, yeah. this this one, maybe this film uh, knocks it out for anime apocalypse. It's such a good film. <laughs> um, what is your least favorite and least favorite holiday movie trope? Least favorite holiday movie trope. Favorite and least favorite. Yeah, or you can you can pick and choose. I'm I'm flexible. Man, these are great questions. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. My least favorite was always uh, that they always say hot cocoa, never hot chocolate. Ooh. Uh, so obviously I called it out in this one. But whoever says hot cocoa, I don't know. I, I know okay. one. Uh, no, no, that moves into like what I – so when I saw the Santa Claus, and you know in that one scene where like we've been perfecting <laughs> the best hot cocoa for like millennia. Yeah. And uh, that – like I watched that when I was like eight. And from that moment – I wanted to find the best hot cocoa. Right, because hot chocolate seems like a different thing. Yeah, hot chocolate's like watery, distilled, like it's gross. Yeah. But hot cocoa, it's like there's something, there's something beautiful about that. So I get hot, hot cocoa, cocoa actually on like my first. Yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. On the, oh, sorry. On, a, on my first date with my girlfriend, uh, we spent the day trying to find good hot cocoa. Did you find it? No. 
<laughs> and I never saw her again, just like all of Storm's yeah. exes. It was just a few. <laughs> A hot cocoa sounds so much more innocent and delectable than a hot chocolate. Yeah, yeah. Storm? You know, I'm just going to hop right on to that hot cocoa train. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know it was such a touchy you know, subject. <laughs> I, I'm definitely two things. One, I, I'm starting to really love Christmas-themed pop-up bars. Those are starting to frequently be my, like, must-do. But uh, I, I got some bad news for you this year. It's uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I, 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 I absolutely, I just cringe at the. Oh, what is that? A mistletoe just hanging under over them. <laughs> Always that, that most coincidental moment. This is like, to be honest, I feel like I've never seen a mistletoe in real life. I was gonna say the same thing. I don't even know what a mistletoe looks like. <laughs> 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 I, it's I always their walk. grandma too walking around with it. Right? Yep. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh mine is, is is more of just like a romantic halt movie, but also Christmas movie trope. It's when things are like over explained and then to the like so because the audience can't figure it out. I, I hate that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then you know I love the cheer and the good feelings, the good vibes, and apparently zombies too. That's also my favorite Christmas movie right. trope is zombies. <laughs> We can have zombies in the sequel for you. Any <laughs> <laughs> recommendations? Cup of fear. Cup of Don't fear. Have a cup of fear. Cup of fear. We've already Cuff talked about it, David. Uh, can I be a zombie? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, awesome. Um, oh, I didn't know if you had any more. Sorry about that. Uh, um, <laughs> I don't know. Not very good. So I'll just. Uh... <laughs> well, on that note, then. Well, again, I will say, make sure that you definitely stop by cupofchairmovie.com. You can get your movie tickets for uh, the local drive in theaters, which is definitely a good experience. I will, much like I said in my review, I definitely highly suggest that you uh, drink responsibly. But also encouraged because it's definitely one of those type of movies where not only you're going to unwind, but adding a little bit of extra to that unwind is definitely going to take this over the top for you. Um, and all, and also you can get um, exclusive cast and crew Q and A screenings as well on the website. And the deal is, if this movie does good, then I could be in the third one. So I know you guys love me. Yeah. So let's yeah. see the second one. So like second one, third film, but second. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you know you love me, so like help us out here. But now, nonetheless, seriously, unbiasedly, um, you definitely want to check this movie out. It's a good uh, movie, getting you into the holiday spirit with tons of laughs for all ages. I mean, I don't know. Some Alice said it's for kids. Ages, but... ages, ages. <laughs> <laughs> Alice said it's for kids. So get your toddlers out. Uh, make sure they're propped up right. <laughs> get them their milk. <laughs> <laughs> and have a good time with them. <laughs> and of course, today we talked to Jake Carlwitz, the writer and director, and the stars of the film Storm Stevenson and Alexander Oliver. You three, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. Any other closing mark from you all before we get out of here? I'll just say what I always say, which is that if you like the movie, it would mean a lot if you told your friends about it and shared, uh, you know, uh, tweeted about it, uh, hashtag cup of cheer and told us what you thought about it. The movie is really only gonna spread if people are telling everybody about it. Um, we think that everybody's gonna really like it and find it funny, so yeah, make sure you share it, tell your friends. It's on Tubi to watch for free starting from today. Everybody can go ahead and watch it. It's also on Amazon, it's on Comcast, it's on VOD, you can find it wherever, but it's free on Tubi, so watch it and tell everyone else to watch it. Thank you so much, guys, this is great. Yeah. You guys are awesome, absolutely <laughs> loved it. Thank you so much. Jake, Jake, this sounds like a good uh, good advertisement for you. Like this holiday, don't spread COVID. Spread cheer. Cup of cheer. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Yeah. That I is perfect. Use it. <laughs> All right, everybody. So thank you so much for checking out our review of Men in Black for today. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we'll catch you all very soon. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you.